Happening now, Minneapolis and St. Paul are under snow emergencies following the weekend snowstorm. This means the street parking bans are on hold for now. The snow emergency will end Tuesday in St. Paul and on Wednesday in Minneapolis. Something to watch out for as the weather starts to warm up is street flooding. In many cases, there is standing water because storm drains are blocked by ice and snow and the water has nowhere to go. Ellery McArdle is live in Minneapolis with a look at that issue. Whereabouts are you this morning, Ellery? Yeah, so Chris, we're at the intersection of 8th and 5th and the Marcy Holmes section of uh, Minneapolis. And as you can see below me, this was water that was all pooled up yesterday. But as you can see, it's frozen over for the most part, making it really slippery if you're driving or even walking in this area. But this pales into comparison to what we saw yesterday. I want to show you some pictures that you all sent us to our Care 11 Facebook and Twitter accounts. Uh, you can see standing water in a bunch of other neighborhoods in Minneapolis. We also got some uh, video from Grand Avenue in St. Paul as well. But in many cases, the standing water is because storm drains are blocked by ice and snow, giving the water basically nowhere to go. And as we've got more daylight, you can only imagine that this problem is going to get worse. Now, another problem when we talk about all the snow that we've gotten this winter, the state fire marshal is really concerned about carbon monoxide poisoning in your home. So what he is suggesting you to do is make sure your detectors have all their batteries in them, make sure that you check them, make sure they're, that they're working well, and also more importantly, clear out the vents from the outside of your house of snow because if it clogs up there, it can really pose a big risk. Lauren and Chris, we all know that this is something as homeowners that's easily something that we overlook and kind of forget to do, but it can really save your life and really just clearing out those vents just takes a few minutes. It's such a good reminder. I know I've definitely forgotten to do that in the past. So Ellery, thank you, Chris. Sticking with snowy roofs for our morning rush with all that heavy snow from the weekend and rain expected this week. Snow and ice dam removal folks are extremely busy. The president of the ice dam guys says he's been getting 200 calls a day. The snow is going to soak it up like a sponge and it's going to be, you know, like par parking three or four SUVs on your roof. So trying to get that snow off by either calling a professional or roof raking it. That's the best thing. If you suddenly notice that you have a hard time opening doors or windows to your home, your roof may have reached the tipping point of becoming too heavy. For more snow clearing tips and for real time weather alerts, download our Care 11 mobile app or visit care11.com. A final chapter closing today in the so-called House of Horrors case in South Minneapolis. The wife of a man serving time for sexually and physically assaulting his twin daughters for years will be sentenced today. Sheila Wilson pleaded guilty to criminal neglect last year. Her husband, Jerry Curry, is serving out his 30-year sentence. A popular North Minneapolis donut shop is celebrating its one-year anniversary despite a recent tragedy. Kyle and Megan Baker won the National Cake Decorating Championships in 2017, but the bake Baking Wizards recently had to close up shop for a day after they lost their house and dog to a fire Friday morning. The couple says despite their loss, they are grateful to be able to share this special day with all their loyal customers. Breaking overnight, fire officials in Brooklyn Park are trying to figure out what sparked this apartment fire. When crews arrived, they saw smoke coming from a second floor apartment. The resident living there was able to make it out safely, but several pets were injured. Crews on the scene say a firewall inside the building helped keep the flames from spreading. Yeah, the fire was contained in the, the uh, apartment itself, so uh, which just uh, showed just uh, how important it is to have early detection as well as to uh, safely evacuate the structure as well as to make sure that you close all the doors uh, when you sleep at night. That fire was contained to the one apartment, but neighbors were evacuated because of all the smoke. Now let's head to Sven for our one thing weather. Yeah, we're looking at more sunshine today. Temperatures just below freezing though again, uh, but that strong March sun will do some melting anyway. About 30, 31 degrees heading into the afternoon. Warmer tomorrow though, we're talking at 40 degrees and we're into the 40s the next few days, but it also comes with some rain. We'll be talking more about that coming up. Thanks, Sven. We got a live picture coming in from Capitol Hill this morning where President Trump is ramping up the border wall battle once again. The president is expected to release his 2020 budget in the next few hours, and it does include another $8.6 billion in funding for the wall. That budget has to be funded before October 1st or the government could shut down again. Democratic leaders say the president's plan will be dead on arrival. Financial experts say the last government shutdown cost the U.S. economy $11 billion. Two new developments within the last hour. In a deadly plane crash in Ethiopia, the latest report, search teams have found the black box, and it is described as partially damaged. 
Also new since five, Indonesia joins Ethiopia and China in groundbreaking the Boeing 737 MAX 8 model planes. In grounding, rather, the crash that took place yesterday just after takeoff killed more than 150 people from 35 countries, including eight Americans. Alicia is diving into why this is sparking a lot of safety concerns across the world. Yeah, Chris, grounding all 737 MAX 8 planes, probably the right call because this is the second time that this model plane has crashed in a matter of months. Now, you may remember the line air flight that went down over the Java Sea back in October that killed all 189 people on board. Now, it's still too soon to tell what caused the Ethiopian Airlines flight to crash, but what is interesting to note is that both planes that crashed were on Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes, which is a newer model plane. Some similarities, both planes were operated by well-known airlines with strong safety records. Both also had issues with altitude before they crashed. They also crashed relatively early into their flights. Lion Air crashed in just 13 minutes after taking off, while Ethiopian Airlines crashed just six minutes in. A part of the Lion Air crash was that the new MAX 8 plane had a new automatic system that pulls the plane's nose down if it thinks it's at risk. During that flight, the system was responding to faulty data, making it difficult for the pilot to take over the plane's automatic system. Now, like I said, it's still too early to tell if that was the case with the most recent crash. However, officials with Boeing say that all pilots should have been trained on how to handle that function after that line air crash took place. So what's next for Boeing? Well, the company tweeted that they were deeply saddened to learn of the passing of all of the passengers and crew on the Ethiopian air flight. They also said they will be sending a crew to the crash site to help with the investigation. Now, the 737 is the best-selling airliner in history, and the MAX 8 is the brand-new model. It's only been out for now, I think, two years. 350 are already out in service. They already have thousands more going to be delivered. So these crashes aren't deterring airlines from buying these planes because they're the newest, the mm -hmm. latest, the greatest. In fact, United and not United, yeah, United, American, and Southwest, they all have these in service right now. Wow. Well, hopefully they get this problem figured out pronto. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, coming up on Sunrise, the warning police are sending out to drivers. There's one simple thing you can do before heading to work to keep yourself from getting pulled over. Then attacked by a jaguar. Why the victim is the one apologizing after nearly losing her life. Yikes. I guess it was it like grabbed her arm and right. just like pulled her close. The spot that was it's blurred, it was shredded. Yeah, right. not good. Yeah.